Hey folks and welcome. I've been asked many times to do an advanced landing gear design video and I'm going to pick four of my most favorite aircrafts I've designed and do a series on it. And this is going to be video number one. And if you're here to see my Airbike ultralight update, I hopefully will have one by this weekend. So please stay tuned. And I won't be covering my Brewster Buffalo landing gear design because I just did a video on that. And uh, I'll put a link in the description below to that. But I won't be touching any on the Brewster because I just did a full video on it. One thing I don't want to do, folks, is have redundant videos. And I have done uh, quite a few videos about the C-130. But if you follow me for any time, you know I like to talk about basic landing gear design in other videos. I like to talk about you know, how to find the information. I like to tell you how to find the documentation and just go out there and figure out how the gears work. But in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about the imagination of design, how we imagine uh, how you're going to build something, how you do the mock-ups and how you're going to make a working and functional gear. And there's going to be three other videos and I can keep expanding on each of them. The C-130 had a 160-inch wingspan and weighed a total of 61 pounds when I was finished with it. So you have to really consider the strength you're going to need for uh, your landing gear. So if you have a bad landing, you're not collapsing them. And that's one of the biggest challenges I had when I first started. Here you see all the finished components that went into the airplane. On the left are two servos, the, the landing gear door, then the nose gear, nose gear actuator, and then the main gear. Now, I have greatly sped up all the video in this so that I don't have a really long video. But one of the things that, for me myself, now look, your mileage may vary, is the testing of things and understanding how to lay out components so that if grass or moisture and stuff gets thrown up into it, how is it going to survive it? Here you see basically my very first mock-up. I had a... A servo in the middle that actually touched contact switches and I didn't like this because I was afraid of if grass and moisture and all of that got thrown up on this you know taking off and landing how reliable would this be I mean I had limit switches for the top and bottom of the travel and um, I thought this was slick as not I mean it was really a nice uh, layout but I was just afraid flying model aircraft especially in the morning when there's dew on the ground what was going to happen inside here one of the challenges that always drive me nuts is repeatability uh, being strong enough that they don't bend and just having a smart layout a layout that's easy to service maintain it's got to be light and it's got to be strong and my you know i've gotten some heat for how much i do testing you know why do i test so much well if you look at all the landing garb designed i've had very few fail i was super happy with how the mock-up worked but i wanted to put an electronic controller in it so i didn't have that servo hitting the contactors so a really good friend of mine burger della pena created this sequencer for me and it had the uh, up uh, limit switches the down limit switches it had the servos for the retract doors and it had the motors that would run in both directions and when i started first testing it i was super duper excited and it just worked flawlessly and i did probably 20 30 hours of testing i tested the amperage the heat i tested what happens if a limit switch didn't work uh, I tested everything on this, folks, and um, I was so super happy with the way it um, was working and the fact it was still light and it was still very, very strong design. I don't know how to stress how important it is to build mock-ups. This is where you figure out if you're overcomplicating it, undercomplicating it, if you are not building something that's going to be repeatable and reliable and serviceable so don't be afraid like i've said in other videos get your documentation get a pencil and paper out and start sketching if you're good at cad or fusion 360 just start drawing just start building parts just get the mock-up so you can see how it's going to function and normally you can see if it's going to work or not I do not want this video to be too redundant over some other videos I've done on the C-130 build. And I'm going to try to go find all of the links to those videos and put them in this one too. But you, if you've followed me, you know I started with air controlling the nose gear and I hated it. And I just don't like air on 
radio control aircraft, I like mechanical retracts uh, that are driven by electric motors. And um, it's just a pet peeve I've got. I, if, you're, if you're doing a regular airplane with like Robart landing gear and it's got air, fine. But if you're doing something like I'm doing where it was really, I, I wanted a very specific speed. I wanted things to work a certain way. Uh, I just hated the air system. So because I didn't like the mock-up for the air, I went to a mechanical actuator that has a 12-volt motor, 300 RPM output of the little gearbox, and it worked flawlessly. But you got to have an imagination to design this stuff, folks. You know, to me, that's the most important thing is, you know, have an imagination of how to make something work. Sure, look at the way the full-scale airplane worked. But when you think of advanced like landing gear design, which everybody keeps asking me to make a video on. To me, this isn't that advanced. These are all parts I bought from a hardware store and used a drill press to drill holes in. Uh, sure, I had my lathe and I machined some nylon six. But basically, folks, th this isn't rocket science. This is just having an imagination and just doing it, just trying to figure it out. Now, the landing gear doors on this took me a long time to get the geometry right, okay? But that's uh, that's persistence. That's just not giving up until I got it right. So, you know, when I think of advanced design, folks, I to me, in my mind, that just means a lot of time, a lot of imagination, and not giving up. And don't be afraid, folks, to miniaturize things. You just need to be able to make sure they work. You know, like these are the brake pads for the brakes on the C-130, which I drew in three, Fusion 360. Don't be afraid, folks, to create something in 3D and then maybe 3D print it and then realize it's so small it won't work. You'll learn a lot doing that, okay? Another thing about Fusion 360 is it really helps you with your imagination. You can see it in three dimension and how it's going to work, okay? So as I wind this video down, folks, I will try to dive deeper and deeper into as I explain how all four of these different landing gears were made two of them are just fixed gears uh one of the fixed gears has a really cool brake system that i've been using for a long time now the other two airplanes had really complex uh, landing gear systems so i'm going to try to expand more and more as i get into it rock on and have a great day <music>